it's exactly 30 minutes past 10 p.m. East African time. Welcome back to your favorite Pan-African show, Bottom Line Africa. And before we start our studio discussion tonight, let's begin with some news coming in from Ethiopia. People in Ethiopia's Oromia regional state have flooded the streets as they welcomed the release from detention of Merera Gudina, a leading opposition voice in that country. And thousands of people clad in apparels that bore Gudina's picture lined the streets leading to his residence where the authorities sent him after his release. Now, local media portals showed other people holding placards and banners welcoming Gudina back. Now, the respected academic and leader of the main opposition party, the Oromo Federalist Front, OFC, had been in detention since December 2016. His release comes barely two weeks after the government said it was dropping cases against a number of politicians, prisoners, as a means of engendering national unity. Now, Gurina and over 500 others were released in the first phase of the announced reform. <laughs> Now, over to our discussion tonight. The sight of brawling politicians is in Congress with the legislature's stately image. Its occupants, who are referred to as honorable members, sometimes act dishonorably, resorting to the confrontational nature of politics and the high stakes often add to the simmering tension. Now, in Kenya, the Kericho County Assembly uh, was thrown, the mess was thrown out of the window as MCS fought after they differed over the 100 million shillings Karenga airstrip upgrade project. All the 47 MCS were at the chamber at 11 a.m. ready for debate on the Kericho Supplementary Appropriation Bill 2017. Now the fracas broke out then. Now in Muranga, still in Kenya, chaos erupted when two warring factions clashed over majority party leadership just two weeks after they fought at a Kiambu hotel. Over the same issue, other counties include Taita Taveta, Mandera. I mean, the list is endless. So tonight, to help us put this into context and, you know, help Kenyans understand what is exactly happening in these counties, we are now joined by lawyer Kefa Ojujo, who is in the studio with me. And joining me all the way from the county of Kisi is Kisi's deputy governor, uh, Mr. Honorable Josh Mangi, who also doubles up as the deputy governor's uh, chairman, of course, uh, that position has been the center of attention in the past uh, two weeks after the resignation of Nairobi Deputy Governor Polycarp Igade. So, let's begin the conversation right now. I understand uh, we still don't have Honorable Josh, but let me just begin with you, uh, Kefa. Good evening, of course, and welcome to the program. <laughs> Thank you, Yusuf. So, you've seen the pictures there, the frackers in all these uh, counties, Moranga, Taita Taveta, Mandera, you know, just after the election. First of all, I mean, these are honorable members. Don't you think they're supposed to have some sort of a respectable, uh, they should have their, you know, their debate, their dialogue in a respectable manner? Or does it mean the stakes are so high in these counties? <laughs> you see, if, uh, I, I'm equally amazed with what's happening. Um, these are the members that the society looks up as, uh, you know, the leaders, the political leaders mm -hmm. that... Uh, is supposed to solve the issue, it's supposed to be a role model to young people and to the members of society. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> we are not amazed. Kenya is a unique country where so many things happen and we call the news. So um, uh, there's a problem with our leadership, uh, right from the county to the national level. And mm -hmm. this is one thing we need to fix. I believe uh, the, the county amendment bill that is before the Senate right now is mm -hmm. likely to you know, to enhance the standards for the uh, member of county assembly because I, I think the member of county assembly, uh, some of them got into this position without clearly understanding their roles. Mm -hmm. And that mentality, you know, you remember the mentality, the home mentality mm -hmm. that uh, we can do what we want, we are in our place and nothing can happen to us, mm -hmm. is, is, is still in them. You know, sometimes as, as leaders, we need to solve things in the best interest of the people mm -hmm. and in a way that reflects that leadership in us. Yes, so, Kefa, apparently, coincidentally, uh, Kenya is going to cover at least the entire five years of devolution by March uh, this year. So if you look at the roles of MCS, of course, they're supposed to oversee how county funds are spent, make or, you know, amend, amend county, county laws. Do you think time is still needed for them to figure out their real roles? 
I think uh, we, we are now, we've matured enough. With mm. uh, five years down the line and another five years now that we're starting, I think right now people should be understanding their role fully. And mm -hmm. right now people should be knowing exactly what they need to fix to have, you know, to harmonize both the county and the national level. And if you see the way the MCAs that we expect can raise a reasonable you know, sound and program at the county level, mm -hmm. that can also be in tandem with the national policy to enhance the betterness and, you know, the, 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 the survival existence of uh, people within the county and even the country at large. Mm -hmm. And you see how they behave still, even wonder if really do they even have the objective? Do they even have the needs of the people at hand? Do they even know what they're supposed to be doing? People should not be fighting right now over you know, allocation of some funds which is supposed to do a project. Mm -hmm. People should sit down and agree what goes to this project? What is the benefit of this project? Is, uh, who is it supposed to serve? Is it covering the whole county? What was its purpose in the first instance? And is it necessary? You see? Mm -hmm. So I think fighting, uh, throwing, you know, uh, punches all over, this is so barbaric. And, uh, Chef, you know, Chef, funny enough, I'd like to hear the view of the Kisu, uh, Kisi deputy governor. Of course, we're going to link up with him uh, shortly. I understand there's a bit of a problem there. Uh, but uh, there are those who come from this school of thought. You know, they're blaming the electorate for all this, telling them that, you know, this is just a reflection. Uh, these leaders, we have the caliber of leaders. We have the reflection of the society. This has turned out into some sort of a cliche. Now, uh, uh, Kefa, let me just quickly take you to a CIC report that was released a few years back. They're saying most MCAs have low capacity to debate bills power struggles between governors and, M and MCAs normally take center stage in these county assemblies. And there's always tension uh, between county executives and these members of the county assembly. What do you think, will, what will it take for MCAs to play their role effectively? What needs to be done, perhaps? I think, uh, Yusuf, that is where we had a problem. Because mm. you remember when you come to the member of, members of uh, the um, National Assembly and the Senate, there was the bar that was raised that you must have a degree, a, a university degree for mm -hmm. you to have those seats. Because they understood that, you know, legislating and, uh, you know, going through bills and laws and making, you know, uh, coming up with progressive ideas requires a certain level of education. Mm -hmm. Now, what is ailing the counties is people that really do not even understand mm -hmm. what it means to legislate, and they do not even understand the purpose, you know, the tandem of those um, legislation in the first place. Some of them are even from falls, or even maybe dropouts within, who maneuver their way in between. Mm -hmm. So you find that you cannot, you know, in economics they say that the output you give, you see, it's a total reflection of what you have intellectually. So yes. if, if you <laughs> cannot yourself, you don't even understand, then you even wonder what type of bills are we going to come up with? What type of legislation do we, are we going to have? Because <clears throat> our progressive and our democracy and development uh, in total start from the county so that if you cannot therefore strengthen the counties, mm -hmm. if you cannot have leaders who are visionary, leaders who understand their roles, leaders who are, you know, role models and know what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. then we will not even realize what we have at the national level. Yes. Yeah. Well said, Kevin. It seems we're going to have this debate between <laughs> ourselves. We had to get hold of uh, the Kisi deputy uh, governor who is in uh, Kisi at the moment. He also doubles up as the chairman of uh, the deputy governors in Kenya. And Kefa, I'm sure you'll agree with me. One position that has come, you know, has been at the center of attention is the position of the uh, deputy governor, especially after the resignation of the Nairobi's uh, deputy governor. And there are those who have linked this position, you know, to some flower girls when it comes to their roles. So do you think uh, it should be legally defined what is needed from these deputy governors? Um, Yusuf, I personally, I have shared my paper of uh, around um, 67 articles of this mm -hmm. constitution yes. that we need to have, you know, uh, a clarity on them. We need to have a, a proper restructure or amendment on those articles so that they serve their purpose. Mm -hmm. Because now, for instance, um, <clears throat> if you compare and contrast, for instance, compare and contrast uh, Article 1, uh, 182, and Article 149, the, the roles of uh, you know the deputy president and that of uh, the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. You wonder that why did this uh, you know the drafters took a whole you know a whole article outlining the roles and outlining how the vacancy in the office of the deputy president can yes. be solved, mm -hmm. and then forgot completely. To th they didn't even think. Uh, I mean, in any way that. The same can happen to the office of the deputy governor. So yes. that the deputy governor has no role per se outlined and how then 
its position can be filled. They just tried to mitigate that when you look at the uh, section 32 of the county, um, the, 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 the county act, uh, mm -hmm. the county government act, section 32. Yes. But then again, you realize that because even the, uh, the, the, the constitution itself is silent on those, those roles, mm -hmm. therefore even a, a bill or an act they come up with cannot assign those roles to the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the, the, the bills then, or the, the act then draws their powers from the constitution. And where constitution is silent on the role and does not anticipate it, then the act itself cannot go ahead and provide the roles for the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. So the only thing we need is a clear amendment of that article and introduce a clause mm -hmm. that therefore provides the functions or a clause that therefore directs the, you know, the, 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 the county or the national assembly to provide then an act that now defines the role and mm -hmm. how the vacancy in the office of the deputy governor can be filled. Because you realize when you read that uh, 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 sub article four of mm -hmm. uh, article one eighty two, yes, that it anticipates the death or um, it anticipates the vacancy in the office of the governor, mm -hmm. but then it does not anticipate vacancy in the office of the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. But again, it anticipates that in the vacancy of both the governor and the deputy governor, it gives the power. Now it, you know, it outlines now the role of the speaker coming in handy. Mm -hmm. So you wonder why they jumped from governor to speaker and then they left the deputy governor mm -hmm. <laughs> vacant. So it's, That's it's interesting. interesting. It's very interesting. It's sure. something that we really need to look at. And there's so many other areas within the constitution. And, and I'm sure and I'm sure that you see deputy governor will not take uh, that assertion of sentiments lightly that they've been reduced uh, to flower girls. And apparently <laughs> uh, the majority leader in the Senate, that is uh, Senator Murkuman, says he will table an amendment bill in the Senate on the position of deputy governors. Actually, I'm told now we have the deputy KC Deputy Governor, but this time around we have him on uh, online, that is on phone. Now, good evening, uh, Honorable Josh Mangi, and uh, welcome to the show. And apparently we've been discussing uh, with lawyer Kefa Ojijo here on the role of Deputy Governors, and the people who've reduced your role, your role as Deputy Governors to flower girls. What do you have to say about it? Uh, Abraham, Abraham, let me, let me first start by demystifying mm -hmm. the position of a deputy governor. Yes, please. This is a constitutional office mm -hmm. that you occupy through election. Mm -hmm. You get elected together with the, with the governor, mm -hmm. just like the deputy president gets elected together with the president. Yes. And just like uh, all deputies, starting from the deputy president mm -hmm. to the deputy CEO to the deputy uh, uh, principal, mm -hmm. your role as a deputy governor is that of deputizing the governor. Yes. Now, many people have come up with this very wrong, wrong narrative mm -hmm. that the position of deputy governor is pretty much like that of a flower garden. Yes. Let me ask you one question, uh, my brother Ibrahim. Yes. If the deputy president is not a flower girl, mm -hmm. a deputy CEO is not a flower girl, a deputy principal is not a flower then, girl. Then why should a deputy governor uh, be a flower girl? I think that is an exactly. important question. <laughs> but, 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 Honorable, uh, Honorable uh, George, there are those who are saying that your duties or your roles have not been you know, legally defined exhaustively. So where will that <coughs> leave you? I'll answer you this way. Mm -hmm. Just like the roles of a deputy president have not been exhaustively defined, mm -hmm. it's the same way the role of a deputy governor has not been exhaustively defined. Yes. But then the right answer is this. Eh? Mm -hmm. There are a number of politicians mm -hmm. who are very keen on becoming a governor. 50% mm -hmm. of senators want to become governors. Members of parliament won't become governors. Mm -hmm. Other politicians won't become governors. But yes. then they realize that there's a stumbling block mm -hmm. that of a substantive deputy governor. Deputy governor, yes. Who is actually waiting to be governor. Uh -huh. So because they don't want that stumbling block, mm -hmm. they've decided to belittle that position mm -hmm. by calling it a flower position. But the truth is, mm -hmm. it's because they're eyeing the position of government. Yes, uh, I think, yeah, you, you, I think you've, you've delivered your point, Honorable uh, Josh. Don't you think yeah. this is a position that has been neglected 
you know, when this constitution was being crafted, because case in point, Nairobi, the deputy governor has already resigned. Of course, he has given a notice up to the uh, end of this month, uh, but people are still confused. They don't know what to do next. You know, uh, Abraham, the constitution of Kenya, 2010, mm -hmm. is a very young constitution. Obviously, there, was, there is a lacuna mm -hmm. on how to appoint a deputy governor when a faculty arises. But if you look at the American constitution, mm -hmm. which was promulgated in 1789, yes. it took several years before they came up with the 25th Amendment on how to replace a deputy governor or a deputy president. Mm -hmm. We have a lacuna, just like the American president at lacuna. Mm -hmm. What needs to be done, like the 25th American Amendment, mm -hmm. is to come up with an amendment in Kenya mm -hmm. that will deal with this particular situation. Yes. There is a proposal in the Senate mm -hmm. whereby in, the, in, 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 in case a deputy governor dies, mm -hmm. or a governor dies and a deputy governor rises up the position of governor, mm -hmm. and then the incumbent governor yes. will forward a name to the assembly, will mm -hmm. nominate a name to the assembly, mm -hmm. which, which then the, if the assembly members pass the name, mm -hmm. and then the governor will appoint him. Clearly, yes. And remember, well, yes. even in the office of the presidency, mm -hmm. there's no clear way on how to appoint a deputy president mm -hmm. if a fuck has arrested that position. Mm -hmm. Why are we not making noise about that position? Mm -hmm. Why are we making noise about that of a government mm -hmm. only? Well, well explained. Now, there are some pictures we are running on our screens right now for our viewers, Honorable Josh, and it has everything to do with the squabbles, you know, the scaffold, the fist fights, and county assemblies. And it's not something that is unique to just one county. There's several counties in line, you know, Moranga, Taita Taveta, Mandera, right after the elections. So what do you think informs these kinds of behavior, especially in county assemblies? I'll tell you it's a question of bad manners. Mm -hmm. It's a question of bad culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are a young democracy. Mm -hmm. And because our economy is not doing very well, people are seeing politics as a source of income, not as a service industry. Mm -hmm. People are no longer joining politics to offer services or to earn a salary. Mm -hmm. So when an MC or a member of parliament feels that his position is being threatened, mm -hmm. they overreact. Yes. And this is purely a question of part culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, well explained. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Josh Mangi. Unfortunately, we, we cannot get you on a video phone, but it's something that we're going to uh, sort out. But uh, Kefa, do you agree with the, the deputy governor there that so many people concentrated on this position because, uh, you know, the politicians interested uh, in, 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 being, uh, in being governors? <laughs> I had Mushimiwa, but Yusuf, uh, let me put it clearly as, mm -hmm. the, as it is in the law. Yes that um, the only advantage that uh, deputy governors uh, do have in the constitution are only two. That's one of, uh, number one is the joint ticket that they share with the governors, mm -hmm. and number two is security of tenure, so that the governor in his volition cannot even you know, sack them or even uh, dismiss them from the office. Mm -hmm. But for you also to realize that even uh, as the, 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 the governor Government Act and even the Constitution anticipate that in the absence of the governor, yes. then deputy governor can step in. Mm -hmm. If you look at section um, 32, subsection 5 of the County Government Act, mm -hmm. it again still limits the role of which the, the you know the, the the deputy governor can act. Mm -hmm. He cannot nominate, he cannot appoint, he cannot dismiss. And you see, these are the sole you no know, powers that the governors have as the head of the county. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the roles that are given to the deputy governor are still the roles that even the governor can wake up in the morning and still assign them to any member of the county executive committee. Mm -hmm. So that you wonder, we saw what happened uh, uh, in the last, uh, uh, I think two years back, between mm -hmm. uh, the governor of Machakos and the deputy governor. Yes. yes, he could not sack him, but we saw literally he did not assign any duty to him. Mm -hmm. So that the governor was literally, you know, uh, the indirectly rendered jobless. Mm -hmm. The deputy governor was rendered jobless. Mm -hmm. And those duties were assigned to another member of the county executive committee. So then it raises the question that 
why can't we then have defined roles for the deputy governors yes. so that when they come to the office, we know exactly what they're supposed to do so that we're not just left thinking that they are supposed to do any duty that will be assigned to them by the governor. Mm -hmm. If governor doesn't assign any duty to them, then they don't have a duty to do. You well, see? Well explained. Uh, there are many thanks, uh, Kefa Ojijo, for your input. And earlier, of course, I was talking to the Kisi deputy governor who is Honorable Josh Maangi, he also doubles up as the chairman of the deputy governors in Kenya. And earlier on our top story, we did have a story with regards to, you know, EU suspending funds. And apparently the European Union had suspended a multi-million euro project in the face of mounting evidence that its funds were being used to carry out violent human rights abuses. Now the news comes, of course, less than 24 hours after guards working uh, from the EU-funded uh, Kenya Forestry Service mounted a raid in Emberboot Forest, killing a 41-year-old man. So we did ask you on our Twitter poll tonight if you support the EU's move to suspend uh, Indigenous People's Fund. And 54% of you said yes, and 46% of you said uh, no. I'm going to go through some of your comments uh, shortly, but for now, let's take a look at our proverb of the day. And finally, with regards to our Twitter poll tonight, at Alice Kemunto says it is a decision that was made long time uh, ago. It just needed a trigger. Uh, it was awaiting a trigger for its implementation. It's not a surprise to us, given their recent sentiments on Kenya. At uh, Megai Udwar says their funds will never solve the problems for some years to come. And then Atotieno says, yes, I support Kenyan government must style up on how to handle a crisis. It is a blow. And then at Lennox says, if the EU intends to help Kenyan people, should do it without considering the political class. I don't know how relevant that is. Many thanks for your feedback. Of course, you've been watching Bottom Line Africa right on KTN News. My name is Yusuf Ibrahim. Remember, this program is aired every Monday to Thursday from 10 to 11 p.m. Until tomorrow, same place, same time. Bye-bye and enjoy the rest of the evening.